Oh man, guys, I found a really interesting study today, and when I read it, it just confirmed so much for me and gave me the ammunition I need to slam a few people that just outright get on my nerves for lying about being a lifetime natty. However, let me first say that if you understand the risk of running a cycle of steroids, and there are a lot of them, and I will link to my video on those risks down in the pinned comment below, and you still decide to do it, nobody has the right to judge you. And I'll repeat that. Nobody has the right to judge you. It's your decision. You do what you want to do, because I certainly won't judge you either. Just don't lie about it. If someone asks you if you're natty or not, just own it and say you're not. Done. But lying is an issue because guess what? Guys like me that are in the spotlight and give fitness advice on a weekly basis online, we wear that Natty for Life title as a badge of honor so that when I tell you guys to do something or eat a certain way or try one of my programs, you know based on my results whether my information is valid or not. Not saying someone on GIA can't give great advice because that's 100% not true at all, but just like when chicks Photoshop their butts to be twice the size of what they really are, and then they try to sell you a glute training program, you get pissed, right? Well, it's the same thing. Also, guys, as an advocate for staying natural, understand that there are zero side effects to being natural in training, and you get to keep your gains forever. So unless you plan on juicing for life for your career, the only reason to go on a cycle for the majority of you is to temporarily gain muscle, but permanently risk your health. But back to the topic at hand, based on this new study, even if you ran one cycle of steroids in your teens, and you're now in your 20s, you're still considered not natural. Your body has been genetically altered at the DNA level for life, and here's why. Researchers at Keel University have shown for the first time that human muscles possess a memory of earlier growth at the DNA level. And to me, this has always been something I've known deep down to be true, and to be honest, I think it's the main reason why my own body is responding so well to my new level of intense training five days a week at 6 a.m. When I was in my teens and 20s, I could train five to six days a week. And now that I decided to do that again, my body remembers all that training that I used to do, and my muscles are reacting accordingly and getting back into their tip-top shape. You know, it was funny, one of you guys actually left a comment on my last video saying, you're starting to look like you did back in 2015. And I responded, I said, yeah, because in 2015, I was able to train five or six days a week. <laughs> I think I like, had just started dating my wife around then. And then, you know, family gains happened and gym gains went down. But anyways, <laughs> I feel stronger, tighter, and bigger. And overall, like my workout intensity has gone back to like how it used to be. Now, what these researchers found out is that periods of skeletal muscle growth, so skeletal muscle guys, biceps, triceps, chest, glutes, quads, lats, traps, etc. They're, they're remembered by the genes in the muscle helping them grow larger later in life. Now think about that for a minute, guys. If you're going to enter a natural bodybuilding show and you're up against people that ran steroid cycles in the past, and that could be one year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, it doesn't matter. When they start getting show ready, their DNA will remember those periods of skeletal muscle growth and that will help them grow even larger getting show ready. So that basically means that steroids could be creating long-lasting changes, making short-term instances where athletes stop using them pointless in terms of fairness or competition. And now to get a bit more scientific, I'm going to read directly from the study. So using the latest genome-wide techniques, the researchers from Keel, along with the universities of Liverpool, John Moores, Northumbria, and Manchester Metropolitan, studied over 850,000 sites on human DNA and discovered the genes marked or unmarked with special chemical tags when muscle grows following exercise, then returns back to normal and then grows again following exercise later in life. Known as epigenetic modifications, these markers or tags tell the gene whether it should be active or inactive, providing instructions to the gene to turn on or off without changing the DNA itself. As explained by Dr. Adam Sharples and his PhD student, Mr. Robert Seaborn, in this study, we've demonstrated the genes and muscle become more untagged with this epigenetic information when it grows following exercise in earlier life. 
Importantly, these genes remain untagged even when we lose muscle again, but this untagging helps switch the gene on to a greater extent and is associated with greater muscle growth in response to exercise in later life, demonstrating an epigenetic memory of earlier life muscle growth. A mouthful, right? But it makes sense. But what does it all mean? Well, it's not all bad, guys, and I'm going to relate this to everyone, whether you're natty or not, okay? This isn't a natty witch hunt here. It's just information for you guys to digest. If you're making great progress with your current workout program and get injured and have to stop, you might lose muscle, but on the DNA level, the skeletal muscle growth you obtained will be remembered, and when you recover from your injury, getting back to where you were won't take that long. Your muscle memory will kick in, which is awesome, right? This is why I think it's so important to get kids out of the house and into sports or the gym as soon as possible. They will develop their skeletal muscle tissue for growth and strength very early in life, and as they get older, their bodies will be healthier overall. Even if they don't have as much time to train as they used to, as they go to college or start a new job or get into relationships, their muscles will respond better and faster to stimulation even if they can only exercise a few days a week. In other words, it will be much easier to maintain a fit physique for them versus someone who just started lifting in their mid-20s with zero muscle memory. But now, let's apply this to the fake natty phenomenon. Okay, so drugs like steroids, Tren, Clen, and Anivar, which I've made videos on if you guys want to learn more about those, they're so easy to get nowadays that I'm worried for the future of the fitness industry. Like, insanely easy to get. It kind of blows my mind. Even YouTube has become a cesspool of false expectations and shitty information based on how someone looks. You got kids in their late teens and early 20s with the muscle maturity of a man in their late 20s and early 30s, and these teens have only been trading for like three to four years, like serious trading under their belts. But what blows my mind the most is that the general public seems to accept genetics and super clean eating as the reasons why these people look so ripped and shredded and huge 24-7. And my question to them is, okay, so where were these genetics like 10 or 15 years ago? I worked at a gym my entire life, guys, and I saw men and women of all ages come through the door day after day and train as hard as they could while eating on a strict meal plan. And while they looked amazing, they never built a physique like Simone Panda or Jeff Seed. It just didn't happen. And with this new study, the conclusion is that even if people like Simone and Jeff both stopped right now, they might shrink down a bit, but overall the drugs have unlocked the unnatural potential in their skeletal muscle to a greater extent than a true natty will ever be able to obtain. So what's the point of this video? Was it made to just call out some fake natties? Well, no, not really. Yes, I created this video to expose and educate, but my main goal was to try to find a way to connect with each and every one of you watching this video to get you to listen to what I have to say. At the end of the day, my goal is to give you guys the edge you need to make more gains, and that can only happen if you set goals and expectations for yourselves that are obtainable. And I'm not just talking about who you follow on Instagram for inspiration. For example, when I started training, I was inspired by Arnold's physique to train hard in the gym, like 99% of the rest of the fitness population. <laughs> But the difference was, guys, I knew no matter how hot I trained in the gym, I would never look like Arnold as a natural athlete. But I admired his passion for training versus just how he looked. Arnold would literally squat until he passed out and puked and then would get up and start squatting again, which was insane but inspiring to the DBZ nutcase I am, right? There was no false expectation set for me that I could look like Arnold, which I think is much healthier than being fed lies by a fake natty scumbag. I would definitely like to hear your thoughts and comments below, but before we get started with your comments, be sure to smash that like button, and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.